we go. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. So everybody get your coffee, yep. get your donuts, or those not the best donuts. Um, I'm gonna I'm gonna keep going with that donut theme. I'm gonna keep going with the food theme. And what I'd like you to do is think about something for me. Um, you can open your eyes, close your eyes, just kind of center yourself. I want you to think about the last really fantastic meal you had. Think about it. Think about what made it fantastic. Was it the taste? Was it the smell? Does anyone is anyone thinking of something? You want to yell it out? Tell me. Environment. What was it? The environment that I was yeah. in. The environment. Okay. The company I was with. Company you were with. Great. How did it make you feel that meal? Anybody else? All right. Um, now I want you to think about the last time you had really fantastic sex. <coughs> okay, I see a little a little nervousness here. I don't I don't hear people calling things out as much. <laughs> Anyone want to tell us about it? They want yeah. more reason. <laughs> All right, well, just a little demonstration, because <laughs> uh, <laughs> these two very basic human needs, food, sex. One of them we can talk about in mixed company. The other gets a little awkward. <laughs> so why is that? Well. Our bodies tell us that we want and need both food and sex, you know, from a very, very young age. But our culture tells us that to want sex needs to happen in a very specific way and a very specific circumstance. It's not something that we talk about in public very much, or at least not in very real ways very much. Um, when we're young, we're told not to talk about it. When we get a little older and our bodies are kind of urging us to talk about it, we're then told not to do it, for God's sakes, yet, yeah, please. And we're told about all of the dangers of doing it. We get a little bit older, we find our mate, and then we're told, do it a lot, together, and do it right, and do it so that you have pleasure and your partner has pleasure and oh, but we didn't really tell you anything about it. You're just supposed to know. That is where Geeky Sexy Love comes in. That's us. I'm Jennifer Rahner. Together with my husband, Sean, we have started GeekySexyLove.com. We are a, um, we work locally and nationally as sexuality and relationship educators. So our vision is to change conversations about sex and to make them easier to have in both public and private spaces. We provide sexuality education to a broad range of audience, audiences to help people to shed shame around sexuality, <laughs> to gain real um, information about how to do and have sex better, and to, um, oh, pardon me, I'm forgetting myself, to embrace and express healthy desires, and to have real conversations about sexuality in both public and private spaces. <coughs> now, we pre-launched our site just about a year ago in January of 2018. We have been working for the last year on basically just developing our branding and getting the word out about who we are and what we do. Um, we have spent a lot of time networking and training <laughs> with other sexuality educators, both uh, mostly nationally, and working with some trail trailblazers in the field. Um, we have contributed to articles and um, books around sexuality and relationship education. And we have started producing content just to kind of get our name out there and position ourselves in this field. Our next step is to do a product launch, which we anticipate in spring of 2019. 
So our desires right now, and the reason that we applied to do One Million Cups, are that we're looking for entrepreneurial mentors. Um, we have a lot of big ideas. We don't know how to put them necessarily into play, the nuts and bolts type things. Um, so we are looking for people that we can reach out to and ask for assistance in that respect. Um, we're looking for funding. We're not quite sure <laughs> necessarily what kind of funding sources we're going to find, but at this point, we are completely self-funded. Um, everything that we've done, we've put our own money into. Um, we're also looking additionally for people to hire because we know that our specialty is sexuality and relationships. It's not websites, it's not branding, it's not social media marketing. So we know that we're going to have to reach out to experts in the field to help us get our, our message out. So, now is your turn. We want to know if you have, can offer us any help or resources, if you want us to hire you for any of those things that we've talked about, um, if you want to join our mailing list or follow us and see where we go from here, or if you have any questions for us. Yes? What is your revenue model? That is a great question. And we, we do have several ideas. Um, which we have not put into fruit, like we haven't gotten to that point yet, and that's one of the reasons that we're looking for entrepreneurial vendors. Yes? What social media platforms are you uh, using to, to get your brand out there? Currently, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram. Facebook, Twitter, Instagram. Uh, there we have a Pinterest board. We have articles on Medium. Um, trying to think what we thought of it. That's probably the main ones, but we're constantly trying new ones to see um, to see where people are interested in finding us. Yes? Who would be good referrals for you? I'm thinking like counselors, that sort of thing that might see you guys as a good resource to recommend to somebody <laughs> who's having issues. Absolutely. Um, definitely, definitely counselors, therapists, that sort of thing. Um, one of the first things that we're looking at doing here locally is um, uh, workshops and classes geared towards adults. Um, and that's probably one of the first things that you'll see from us next spring is a series of classes and workshops. Um, so yes, absolutely. Therapists, counselors, those sorts of people, we love to talk to them um, and have them refer their clientele to us. Um, we're not therapists, we're just educators, but we're we're in the business of bringing the best information. Um, you know, all of us have access, right, all the time, but there's so much going on online that it takes anybody time to get through all of the information. And that's essentially what we do, is we're, we're going through the information all the time and bringing actual information to people. Yes. So what is your background? My background, okay. Um, when I was 15 years old, I used to listen to Dr. Ruth <laughs> in bed at night. I remember she would come on at 11 o'clock at night, and I'd be laying in bed, and I would turn my radio on, and sit there under the covers, and I'd listen to it. And I'm like, oh my god, I want to do that someday. That's where all of this started, was me trying to figure things out as a teenager. Since that time, I have studied sex and relationships relentlessly. I'm currently completing a degree in psychology and gender studies. I'm going to graduate in January. Yes. <laughs> um, and, and in terms of my um, professional background, I've been a writer for 20 years. So my entire career has been researching and, and, and then repackaging, repackaging and explaining information to people. Um, I've worked a lot in technology. I've been, a, I've been a tech like support desk person and I've written technical documentation which I really I really see as very similar. You, you're presented with a problem, you suggest some solutions, let's try this, let's try that, um, and you help people solve problems. I see sexuality and relationship education as the same thing. You know, here here is this here's this issue that a lot of us struggle with. Let's look at some solutions, let's look at some new ways of doing things, 
And hopefully we can kind of troubleshoot you through to a place where you're feeling better about your sex life. Yes? So, I mean, ultimately I imagine there's a lot of different demographic groups that you might <coughs> choose to target. And yes. so, in order to both achieve you know, your vision and where you see the most help, is it, is it working with kids? Is it working with just the boys? Is it just, just the girls? Is it working with, you know, Christian couples and working with couples that are breaking up and trying to fix it. Like, where is the? Do you feel like there's a particular place that this is best suited? I think, um, I think, I, I, I think, I can speak to some of the, some of the people that we're probably not working with. Yeah. We're probably not going to work with people who are breaking up. Okay. Um, because because we're not, you know, because we aren't therapists. We're not presenting solutions for things that have become broken, necessarily. What we're doing is presenting information to improve upon something that's good already. Um, so I would say primarily working with adults, although we've done a lot of work with kids here locally um, in terms of background. Sean and I actually started uh, the Shepherd Project, which is a two-year-old LGBTQ youth support organization here in Augusta, so we've been working with kids in that sector already for a little while. Um, we're also both trained OWL facilitators. OWL is short for Our, Our Whole Lives. It's a comprehensive sex ed curriculum that uh, was created by the Unitarian Universalist and United Church of Christ churches together collaboratively, um, and we're both trained facilitators in that. So we have the ability to work with kids, um, but I think our focus is more on, on adults um, who want to improve their sex lives and, in, and improve their communication primarily around sexuality. Did I miss anything? Um, like Jen said, we are primarily looking at adults in this arena. Um, and we are also uh, in talks for setting up our classes for middle and high school. Uh, age groups in the next year just because in the state of Georgia it's still that abstinence focused sex ed which all the research shows leads to higher STI rates, higher unintended teen pregnancies and these are things that we're passionate about as well not just you know helping adults seek their best love lives and best ro uh, romantic relationships we're also interested in public health and doing the best we can there so that's why we went uh, part of the reason that we went and got the uh, certified out facilitation training um, was to be able to focus on all age groups, not just adults. And, you know, they have curricula for every age group. Yeah, OWL is elementary on up, right? Yeah. OWL is complete, yeah. complete life state that spans sexuality education. In fact, they're coming out with a curriculum for older adults uh, in the new year. One of the other nice things about it is, although it was created by two different churches, it's a completely secular uh, curriculum. It's got a faith component that the churches can add to it, but it's something that we don't have to do because we don't, we don't get into that realm. Um, one final thought on the revenue model. Um, there is There are a couple of things that we're looking at doing, and I would really love to talk to someone um, Someone who's familiar with setting up product shops online is, is a special interest to me because um, we do have, I think, a really sustainable idea for a new way of adult product shopping. So what platform are you looking to use for your your e-commerce? I don't know. That's what we're <laughs> All right. I, I really don't know. It's, it's nothing I've ever done before, so I'm really at the beginning of figuring that out. Yes. Where would you be sourcing your, your products from? Um, I, I'm hoping to source them directly from the manufacturers. Um, there are a number of specialty manufacturers um, that are not necessarily represented by wholesalers. Um, so I'd kind of like to be a, uh, I'd like to be someone where you can go to for higher end specialty products. Thank you, Jen. Great. Thank you so much.